Toads, we are back. Um, we're a little bit impromptu with this one. We go from different spots to different spots. We've been talking grounds all week. Troy Harley, the Sandown um, Park, Sandown Cup, sorry, at Sandown Park last night was run and won. I commented about a horse, in, a dog in the race that uh, was the omen better the night with Bronsky Beat and uh, the pink colours. I didn't put two and two together and know that it was uh, trained by Brendan Purcell. I knew B Purcell, but I didn't know that was Brendan Purcell. Fellas, firstly, welcome and uh, great story. Thank you. Big night last night, mate. Yeah, no, it was terrific. Um, yeah, it was my first group one, so um, just hope there's more to come. It's been building up with uh, with Bronski beating the other team as well. Obviously, his strike rate's been well reported the last week in regards to his strike rate of Sandy and the city racing. So it's nice to cap off uh, a big one finally. Yeah, no, it was, yeah. I won a couple of group threes, but to um, finally get a group one was, was real good. And um, we own that dog, so it makes it even better. You, um, you've been back here for four years. There's been a couple of reports saying that because uh, of Tassie closing down, but you've been back here, you are a Tasmanian, and um, you set up shop in Lara. You were saying to me earlier you love Lara and reckon it's a great place not only to train greyhounds but to live, mate. Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, I um, got the opportunity to come back and um, help Robert, Robert Britton, and from there I've uh, sort of rented the place off him, his, his uh, property behind, um, his, his main property, and I've got my own kennels now and, and set myself up. So, yeah, no, it's all going good. How many dogs you train? Uh, I've got about 33 at the moment. So, yeah. who uh, keep, does... keep you nice and busy. Sorry? Keep you nice and busy. Yeah, no, yeah, it's good. Um, yeah, we, we're still all working together because the properties are joining each other. So I go and help Robbie in the morning, work his dogs, and then we work ours, uh, mine, and... Um, yeah, but like it's, uh, you know, we, we start at 5.30 and um, sort of finish the dogs about 10 and then just a few let outs during the day and, um, yeah, and just races and trials. So my association with you, Brendan, is uh, through the trotting uh, people and you, a lot of the trotting people, there'd be probably a lot of trotting people, especially on Twitter, that wouldn't know you had a had a harness racing background, but you, you, you were about the same age and uh, were well, junior drivers around the similar sort of time. You, that was a long time ago, that wasn't it, 30 years ago now? Yeah, it was a long time, yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, I, I first started out in harness and um, moved from Tassie to Victoria and worked for John McLean and um, worked for Gavin Lang and then went out on my, my own and had a bit of a go for, oh, for another 10, 12 years and then went back to Tasmania and um, trained over there for, for about eight years, I think, and then sort of got out of it for a little bit and then got into the dogs. What, what, what brought about the change? Um, I, I sort of had enough of harness racing, and um, one of my, my clients, my owners that I, I had for years through the harness, we um, he said we would do something together. So we actually uh, bought a car wash and started doing that. But I used to get bored; just, there was nothing to do. Like you know, like in a car wash, once it's clean, that's it. We're sitting there doing nothing. So um, I thought oh, I might get a dog, and um, yeah, we we got a greyhound. I started mucking around with them, and all of a sudden I had five and six, and then eight and ten. And, yeah, and then we had it about, I don't know, 15 in Tassie and um, used to go go okay. We used to get plenty of winners and all that sort of thing. And then, yeah, and then the um, I wanted to get, just sort of try and better myself a little bit more and come over here and learn a bit more off the better trainers. And when the opportunity came up with Robert Britton, um, yeah, I jumped at it and we sold the car wash and I moved over here and, yeah, away we went. There's a lot, a lot being... Um said about the name and, and, and all the rest, and like Gareth was alluding to it today, but I'm tipping it has a little bit more meaning for you as well because you said there before with your association with Johnny McLean and he was one of Johnny's better horses definitely back in the day um, and he was a ripping horse himself, but uh, I think you all sort of had a fairly fond spot uh, for him as a horse as well, wasn't he? Yeah, no. Um, yeah, I drove him at Mooney Valley a few times and um, I drove him in a couple, couple of country cups, which um, he was always special to me. And everyone liked him. He was a nice dog at the stable. And, um, yeah, and I always thought to myself, I'd ever get one that um, little little black sort of dog looked like him. And I think it, it had a bit, little bit of ability. I would um, name it after him. And fortunately enough, we bought this dog. And, um, yeah, and, and he was trialling very well. And, yeah, he was the one I did it to. So, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the, lot of the guys, Troy, would know looking back. He was something special. All um, it's funny. I did a podcast with Jimmy O'Sullivan. All Alan Hunter's horses were special, sort of to look at on the track, weren't they? They had a bit of a presence about them at the time. 
Oh yeah, like um, quite famous. I mean, he wouldn't get any better in him, would you? Like the way he used to go and um, highlight in blue. But yeah, um, I think it's like any. It's, I mean, it's good. Good horses. They look good. You know? Yeah. They've got, they've got a bit of presence about them, they? So Johnny had a few other good horses. Mate. Sorry, Troy. You had a few other. Have you tried any yeah. other names at all, mate? I've only got one more. I just I brought a little uh, bitch up in Sydney, and I called her Larry Here Lady. Wow. Um, <laughs> you remember her? Uh, yeah. Safe, safe and sound. Yeah. Um, and she's going good. She's had about twelve or thirteen starts. I think she's won five or six. A couple in town. Um, she's in tomorrow night at the Meadows. Um, yeah, she's a nice little honest bitch. Can she win? So, sorry. Can tomorrow? she? Win? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's she, she a chance. Look, um, she needs things to go away all the time. Um, she gets out good, and uh, but just just sort of uses a lot of the track. And if she can get out in front and get away from the other dogs, she, she can use the track, and then she, she can run run okay. But um, it's all about the start with her. But she's been pretty reliable lately. She's been jumping out and going pretty good. Larrakia lady was always very reliable. Troy, I'll hand over. What I'll do while you guys are talking, though, I'll, I'll fly, throw a replay up of the last night's Sandown Cup so the um, people that didn't get to see it can actually see it, and um, you guys might talk through the race, actually. So. Yeah, I was just uh, going to say, Bruno, it's a uh, big thing to win your first group one. How how was it having three... Release set now for the Sandown Cup, the RSN Sandown Cup at group one level, and the stayers are ready. Green light, set to go. Racing, jumping well from near the inside, Sipping Clifford out fast, Bronski Beach going to cut and run tonight, straight over the lead by two lengths, Sipping Clifford, and True Detective a close third, followed then by Rockstar Beef, he shall power, well back to Aller Enchanted, just turns, and Blazing Cartier last of all, under a lap to go to the railway side, and Bronski beat the tearaway leader in the Sandown Cup, out by four lengths, True Detective, Rockstar Beef, then he shall power, Zipping Clifford, well back to Aller Enchanted, Enchanted, just turns and last blazing Cartier. Bronski beats a big leader. Out by four lengths to True Detective. He shall power starting to wind up, but it's Bronski beat clear. All out, but wins the... They don't write that on the check, that's one thing for sure, but you wouldn't like to happen 10, minute, 10 metres earlier. Um, last night, Sandown presented everything in a little bit different format just to try and get people involved. And I suppose that's uh, one bonus for everyone at home. We're able to get some sort of a, um, a, a result in terms of being, feel like you're being there when you can't be there. But you have been associated with um, our cup here at Bendigo. Um, you pretty much, you know, you weren't in the race book. Um, Robbie's on the record pretty well saying that Landmark was here because of yourself. So uh, we've got a bit of a connection to the Bendigo Cup. That's a pretty big result to do that night. Yeah, no, that, yeah, that was great. I mean, he, he was he was one of my favourite dogs ever. He was um, just, just sheer speed and, um, yeah, he was a beautiful dog to train and do everything with and um, he was exciting, you know, to watch. And, um, yeah, no, that was great when he won that race and, I mean, he was a reserve, box 10. He was never going to get a start and he come into box one. It was just all, just all fell into place and it happened. So where is, where's uh, Bronski beat head to now? With, uh, obviously, no national distance championship, those type of races anymore. Where's, where's he head to now? Yeah, I, I, I don't know, to be honest, I, he couldn't go to Sydney in a month's time or so. There's a couple of races up there for him. Um, but I think we'll just play it by ear and, um, yeah, my, you know, he's still only a grade five at the Meadows. Um, he could go there and have a run, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, and then we'll just, yeah, we'll just take, take it one step at a time at the moment. So you've got more young ones coming through, Brendan. You bought this uh, ground as a pup, I think you said, and have you got the others, young ones coming through? Um, the only other young ones I've got, uh, ownership in is I've got four 12 month old um, pups here. Uh, they're about to go and get broken in. Uh, um, yeah, but the rest we've got to keep it pups. But I mean, they're, they're, I'm not, I don't own them, them once. So. I might have. Um, not very good. I have a bad habit, Brendan, of hitting the wrong button from time to time. I'm not sure if I did a mistake, but um, you guys, when you were watching the race, it's not a real mistake. Everyone would have just heard the volume of the of the race and not what you guys were talking about. Just a shortening stride for the Trotton guys. You're alluding that that's just cramping up and it's not uncommon. No, I mean, I mean, it does happen a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's strange it happened to him. He's pretty fit and um, he races over 700 all the time. But I think he just gives his all early on, and you know, I don't know. It's um, a bit strange it happened, and we have to sort of work out what, why. Try and put it, put our finger on why it did happen. But um, yeah, it's not. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world or anything like that. Um, yeah, I mean, he could go around another 
30 times and never happen again. So it's just can be just a bit of nerves, can be different things that can cause it. But um, normally it's sort of happen when dogs aren't quite fit enough or something like that. Coming back from spells and all that, they'll cramp up the first couple of times. It's like tying up the horses, same sort of thing, you know. Yep. So um, yeah, it does happen. There's a great photo, and I'll whack it back up, mate. Um, that's your son with you in the presentation, like Troy was saying there before about the presentation and a bit hollow. But I would imagine being able to share that with your son who normally lives in Tassie must have been a great thrill. Yeah, no, it was. Um, yeah, he's over here at the moment. He trains in uh, Tasmania outright himself. He's he's out of my old kennels over there, and he's, he's I think he's third on the trainers' premiership over there. He goes pretty good. And there's no racing over there at the moment, so he said, oh, I might bring a couple of dogs over. And I said, yeah, we'll do, let's do it. And um, so we organised it all and done it. And then last week I said, you handle this dog tonight. So there you go, and then he, he handled him and um, got him out of the box as good and led and won the heat. So I said, Oh, well, you better do it again tonight. So, yeah, so yeah, <laughs> handled him and, um, yeah, so it was good, you know, like to, um, be, for him to be part of it. Um, yeah, it was real good. Very, very good. I noticed the Kelvin Klein hat too, mate. It must be good money in these grounds. <laughs> <Nah. Yeah. laughs> mate two codes we do 13 questions as well just to so say people can get to know um different sides i suppose of each each person and 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 the likes of, of how much they've had involved with harness racing and grounds you're going to be a very interesting story on a few of these questions i can see that that much for sure number one question i don't think we have to worry about i'll start off with number two if you like hails uh, yep. Well, even it is going to be an issue, but have you owned a runner in the other code? I would imagine the answer is going to be yes to that as well. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, how did you get started in ground racing? How did I? Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, like I said, I, um, I've always been interested in them, actually. I used to go to the, the grounds a bit, and um, yeah, I, I, um, I knew a person, I knew Michael Stringer, and I went to him and just sort of said, oh, you know, we're not able to go at this. And then um, I knew Jason Sharp in Victoria from a long time ago. He used to come up to John McLean's and, um, and help out there with that. And he, he was a, you know, a trainer here. And I rang him. I said, got any old dogs? And he sort of, I could play around and tell you just to learn off. And he, he sent me over one. And, yeah, I won my first start with it. And, yeah, went from there. How'd you get started in the trots? How'd you get started in the trots? You missed the first two. So how'd you get started in the trots? Um... My uh, sister's husband used to train in Tasmania, and I, when I was about 12 or 11, I used to go out there and stay at her place and uh, started then, and yeah, from then on, I was sort of hooked and um, done, it, done it my whole life, yeah, more or less. All right, a two-part question for you again here, mate. Favourite horse or dog um, that you've had and why? Frosty Beat is a horse, just... Nature and Bronski beat as a dog. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah no, no, I'd, I'd say my favourite, my favourite, um, my favourite horse would be um, favourite horse would probably be Bronski beat. I'd say I was just like like him a lot. And my favourite uh, dog overall would be Lamo. And La that, that's just for the reasons I said before. He's just just such a nice dog, sheer speed, and just exciting to watch when they um, let down and really go. He's one of my favourites too. We have fifty-one dollars on it too. Uh, <laughs> well, what's the funny, what's the funniest thing you've seen on a racetrack? Oh, um, I don't know. A lot of funny things over the years, but um, you got me there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we, might, we might come back that one. Biggest one win on the punt or a race win? Tipping last night's going to be up there pretty high. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that's the biggest one. Um, had a few good goes on the punt, but had a lot of bad ones too. But um, yeah, I've got a, uh, I've got a multi, uh, probably about four or five years ago, which was just out of nothing and turned it into a fair, fair bit of money, which was good. Um, yeah, I'd have to say that that was my biggest win, and um, yeah. Another two-part question. Uh, favourite track no longer in operation, if it's applicable, and favourite current track? Be either code. Oh, yeah. My favourite track would have been Mooney Valley in Harness, and my favourite um, track here is Sandown for sure. Very, very good. Best horse or dog that you've seen, mate? Um, best dog I, I would have seen, and it's not so much to well, not, not just ability, but I'd say Fandabar, just for how she was. She wasn't always the best dog in the race, but she knew she was 
just try that hard and, and you know, what won that many group group races was her. And I would say um, horse would be um, probably, uh, I'd have to say, our Sir Vance, like probably he was right in the prime when I was there and he was just, you know, like he won all those into the minions and, yeah. Um, at, uh, what's the most unusual, best, or biggest race meeting you've attended? Biggest race meeting? Yep. Biggest or unusual? Um, unusual race meeting? I don't even know what unusual <laughs> one to ever be there. Um, <laughs> I mean, the normal race meetings. Um, probably um, biggest biggest race meeting. I've, well, I've been to the Cox Plate and sort of like Gallops meetings. But... Um, yeah, look, I mean, a lot of times I reckon, like, the sand there when they have those big nights, there's nothing wrong with them. They're, they're a big night, yeah. you know, like, there's plenty of people there, and she's packed, and, and um, yeah, everything's sort of buzzing there. But um, you know, I, I wouldn't say I've been to, well, I've been to, um, I remember going to uh, Pocono Downs in in America and uh, in the Harness, and um, I thought that was strange, the way they do things over there. That was just the way it's all set up, and, um, yeah, like, you know, Trains have got their own car, uh, the drivers got their own carts with their names on, they come in and just clunk their, clunk their just jump off the helicopter and jump on, onto the sulky and the way they go, you know, it was just crazy. But um, yeah, I thought that was pretty, pretty strange how it's all set up. Um, what race would you love to win? Not necessarily for prize money. If we'd have asked this question last week, I reckon we'd have got a different answer to the one we're going to get now. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, probably now, I'd, I'd actually like to, oh, of course, the Melbourne Cup, I think. Um, in, in dogs. Um, yeah, like that, that's the, the main one, I think. Yeah. Uh, Favourite footy team? Essendon. Yeah. Uh, Favourite beverage? <laughs> Sorry? Favourite beverage? Uh, just beer. Yeah. Normal beer. Block, block from pineapple after that, a few. <laughs> oh, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's left field. And how would you spend your last 10 bucks? Oh, I'd have to have it, on, have it on a dog and try and make it into 20. It's like an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan Purcell, thank you very much, mate. Well done last night. It was um, it was terrific. I wish I had to put two and two together before the race. But, um, yeah, I think it was the omen better than night when Bronski Beat was in the pink colours. I think it, uh, yeah, it's a great story, mate, and well done to you. It's a good journey. And a lot of the trotting guys now got someone to follow. They might not have realised that you're training them. And, uh, yeah, Larrick, your lady and the likes. So, yeah. No, thanks very much. All right, mate. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, Brendan. Well, well done to you last night, and also I think well done to the senior club too for trying to bring uh, bring a bit of colour to the, the to the lounge room of people trying to watch the racing in these weird times. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Thank you.